Hi everyone, my name is Scott Allen. I am the sales engineer with the Solutions Group at Losant. And today we wanted to show you an example of an application we've developed on the Losant platform for monitoring equipment. In this case, it's equipment in a manufacturing environment. Um, this example, we're going to show you um, how we're monitoring several CNC cutting machines. Um, but the same methods could be used for compressors, engines, generators, really any type of equipment. It's just a matter of defining what devices and attributes that you want to track. Equipment monitoring is important for the operations group so that they can keep an eye on each individual piece of equipment, make sure that it's working as much as possible to keep the production numbers up as much as possible. It's important to the maintenance group so that they can predict which systems are in need of repair or to schedule some preventive maintenance. And it's important to the management group who want to know which equipment is working well in their environment so when the time comes to purchase additional equipment, they can. Um, or if there are problems with the line, they need to know about it as quickly as possible as well. So, in this particular environment, we have several CNC machines installed on manufacturing floor, and you can see each of those machines are represented by a dot on the floor plan. Uh, the color of the dot indicates its status, whether it's cutting, not cutting, if it's stopped, or if there's an alarm. We can see that here at a glance. Now, for this particular environment, we do need an edge compute device on the local area network with the machines themselves. The edge compute device will be running the LOSANT edge agent and using one of the more industrial based protocols to communicate with the devices to collect sensor information but also to send commands to the machines so that they could, uh, in case of emergency, they could stop or slow down as needed with it be before any damage occurs to the machine. Now, our edge compute device is a Linux-based computer that can run Docker containers, which means it can be anything from a Raspberry Pi to a um, Dell uh, mini computer. It really doesn't matter to us the size of the computer. Uh, of course, uh, the stronger CPU, the more memory, uh, the faster the machine will behave, but that's up to you as far as what you use for your edge compute device. The edge compute device in this case is connecting to the machines over Ethernet IP, which is talking to the Allen Bradley PLCs. It could also use OPC UA as a protocol to communicate with the devices, uh, plain serial ports. It's up to you and, of course, what the devices will support. So let's start talking about this dashboard itself, uh, visualization of the data that we're getting from the CNC machines. Uh, first up here at the top, you'll see that we're showing you the floor plan of the manufacturing floor and where the machines are located and their status. Now this is something that you can create by using the edit position chart block on your dashboard. And this allows you to do a couple of things. First of all, you can specify the background layout that you want to show, uh, in this case, as a floor plan. If you're showing something over a wider area, you could show a map or whatever makes sense. Within the image itself, we define the upper left-hand corner as 0, 0. The bottom right-hand corner is whatever coordinates we want to show. And then within the attributes for each of our CNC machines, we show its position, both as an X and a Y coordinate, so that we can plot it on the chart as you see there. So it's a pretty easy process to show that. Now besides showing the um, position of the chart, you have control over the shape of the markers that you want to show and the color so that we can show the status. This block here, underneath the um, point display configuration allows you to define for this type of chart what 
type of information do you want to show? So we can base it on one of the attributes, in this case the current status. And we can say that when that status is set equal to cutting, we want to show this as a green circle. Now the green circle marker that you see here is something that we uploaded to the files part of the application so that we can access it from this script. And likewise for all of the other conditions we can select a different marker to show the status for that particular machine. Another thing that you can configure with this type of block is that if I click on a particular marker I want to see certain information about it. In this case I'm seeing the identification of the machine itself, its current status, and a hyperlink that will take me to see details for that particular machine. Again we can control that here in what they call the pop-up bubble display and we can define what we want to show. Again these are attributes they are we are getting from the devices themselves as we've defined them. So the top line is the device name and we put it in a boldface font. And then we have some conditions and that is that if the type of machine that's reporting information to us is equal to CNC, we want to show the status. If it's not, we don't want to show the status because it's a different type of machine, not too relevant to what we want to show. But if it is a CNC machine, then we uh, display the header current status and then again we are getting the status attribute from the device itself and so we're giving it as showing it as cutting, not cutting, stopped, and alarm and again that's in a boldface font but in the regular size as the rest. And then finally at the end we say that we want to show a hyperlink to the details for that particular machine with the um, text de device details displayed within the bubble. And again, if you're displaying other types of information, you can display that in this pop-up as well. But this is a great way for you to show custom information and allow you to kind of start at a top master level and click on a particular device to see the details for that device. Now besides the uh, floor plan that we're showing here, we have some more typical indicators on our dashboard for each of the CNC machines. We have the indicator of the last value that it reported. Uh, over here on the right side, we're showing you a pie chart for the last several hours, how well that machine's been doing as far as cutting, not cutting, or in an alert status. And in the middle, we have a um, a compilation of all of the CNC machines so we can see how well they're operating. Likewise we can look at the quality of the machines and what they're producing and here on the left we've got the total overall quality for all of the machines and on the right we've got a line chart showing us for each particular machine what is its quality um, so I can quickly see what ones are on top once on bottom. So even if they're performing normally, I can tell that one may really may have some quality levels, in this case CNC02 at the bottom. So we might want to alert our maintenance team to evaluate it, make sure that everything is working, and hopefully we get those numbers up to a better value. Um, further down, we do have, uh, again, more charts for each machine telling us uh, the individual status and the quality for each one of these machines and again we can see that uh, some are doing very well and one machine, our CNC07, is having some problems with lots of alarms. Now these bar charts that you see here on the right are also a custom or uh, it's a it's a block within our dashboard that allows you to get very specific as far as the information that you want to see. So I'm going to show you how we configure those. This particular chart is what we call the custom chart block and it is using the Vegalite library as a way to define how we want to view this information. It gives you a lot of control over exactly how you want to see it. So what we've done, first of all, is specify a query of information that we want to see. In this case, we want to see 
All of the data reported by CNC07, we're going to pay attention to its current status over the last 24 hours and break it into five minute intervals so that we can see um, how things are over a period of time. Now down here in the Vegelite spec is where you can define everything that you want to control and it's everything from the width of the block, how um, high, how wide you want it to be, uh, if you want to fit or if you want to include any kind of padding about it. We're using the time, zero, zero, time series zero data that we defined above and we can define if we want to include any labels, uh, define uh, domain, grid, whatever we want to define. Um, but really the most important part is that based upon the status we can define a color for those status to give us a more visual representation of how this machine has been doing over the last 24 hours. So when it's alarm it's red, cutting is green, uh, not cutting is gray, and I'm sorry not cutting is blue, and stopped is gray. So there is a complete library, a complete set of specifications that you can use for these custom charts. So if you don't want to see it as a bar chart, you can see, select another method to show you the information that works best for you. But in our application, we did this for each of our CNC machines so that we can see what's going on uh, very well and what is not going on very well so it needs some help. So by configuring the custom charts, uh, also the the maps and the custom images, you can really display a lot of good information about the information that you want to collect. Now as I mentioned, if I click on a particular uh, CNC machine, the bubble would pop up with a link to the details for that particular machine. So let me show you what that's like here. Um, we've selected that and this time we've actually moved from our dashboard into a user experience that is showing us the information for that particular machine. Now up here at the top we have uh, normal uh, conditions or indicators as far as is the temperature normal, is it receiving the power, are all of the attributes um, for the uh, cutting itself, or the X, the Y, the Z axis, all behaving the way we, we want it to be. And then also we have some customized chart for that particular machine, if it's working well or not. And the nice thing about using a user experience about this is that it's a link so we can easily connect to it, but also we have only have to create this particular screen once, and then when we call it, we call it with a specific machine identifier, so we're getting all of the correct information for that machine. So it is an easy process to put together, and again, you only have to develop and to uh, support it one page to support all of these devices. Now, I would like to go in here and show you um, what we've done behind the scenes to create this type of environment. Uh, first of all, we have the devices, and if you've created any application, you should be familiar with this screen. There's nothing too special about the devices. We just create um, the device information, whether it's a standalone device or whether it's using a gateway to communicate with us. And then we define the attributes that we want to collect. Um, again, we can define hundreds of attributes for each particular device. Um, and this tells us everything from the status to the current, um, if there's an alarm situation, the quality that it's producing, and so on. And then we have the device tags, which are values that do not change every time that the um, device reports information to us. Instead, it gives us some parameters to our uh, processing to make sure that everything is working properly. So in this case we've defined this machine its type as being a CNC machine. Uh, we want to define a threshold for how often or what percentage it should be running. Also what do we consider a percent an adequate alarm percentage and the quality percentage. So as we're processing the data we know is a machine running within 
its expected uh, runtime with the correct number of alarms and the right quality or is something off that needs to be taken care of. The other part of an application, once you've defined the devices, really is the workflows. And the workflows are the way that you define the processing for how you want anything to be managed within your application. It can be anything from once we receive data, if we have to do any kind of conversions or uh, math functions to get the data uh, in the way that we want it to be seen, or is there more information that we wanted to process. I wanted to show you a, a workflow that we have here that allows us to define when messages are sent from the application to our users in the real world. Um, now, during our first shift, there are plenty of people on the floor. We don't need to do this. So we want to have this script only execute after the first shift so that if most people have gone home for the day, but there is a critical situation. We want to notify them in the best way possible. So this particular workflow runs on a timer. It runs every minute, and it's going to look at the information that was collected. In this case, we're going to look at a particular CNC machine, here number seven, and we want to know how many alarms it has reported in the last hour, just by a count. If the count is above its threshold, which is an attribute that we defined for that CNC machine, then we want to continue and report this. If the alarm count is below the threshold, we're done. We don't have to do anything else. So the next thing we're going to do is check the time that we are currently executing because we really only want to go through or send this message after 6 p.m. and before 6 a.m. weekdays. Any other time, there's somebody there that can handle it right on the floor. So we're only going to continue executing if it's after 6 p.m. but before 6 a.m. so that we can process the message. Now, since each CNC machine is reporting maybe once a minute or once every several minutes, we don't want to bombard people with messages. And so what we're going to do here is set a throttle so that these messages will be sent out every five minutes. In other words, 12 times an hour. Um, that way we don't, like I said, we don't want to bombard somebody with messages because people will soon ignore the message if they get it too often. And next, we're going to actually send the message itself. In this case, we're doing it in a simple process. We're sending it to a specific phone number. And the message that we're sending it is fairly static, but it does have the device name that is reporting the error. That way, when they get the message, they're going to see it as CNC007 has crossed the alarm limit in the last hour. And we're going to send that out. Uh, we can add some sophistication to this. So maybe if I say, if it's uh, CNC one through three, I want to send it to this particular person. Otherwise, we'll send it to another. It's up to you. We can send it to multiple people. Um, just a matter that the message gets to the right people in the right amount of time. So this is a rather straightforward workflow that allows us not only just to process the data as we're getting it in, displayed on our dashboard, but also we are being proactive in sending messages out to our managers at the right time. So, well, I hope this has been a beneficial um, video for you to watch. We wanted to show you a typical application for monitoring equipment. Um, but it certainly has lots of room for improvement and sophistication to automate your uh, monitoring as much as possible. We'd like to thank you for your time uh, for watching this video. We hope it was informative. And if you have any additional questions, please contact us at losant.com. Thank you very much. Have a great day.